हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट द डिसेक्शन ऑफ द स्कल फॉर दिस वी हैव डन अ मार्किंग ऑन द स्कल जस्ट अबाउ द आईब्रोज वन सेंटीमीटर वी हैव टेकन अ इंसीजन ऑन द स्कल आफ्टर टेकिंग इंसीजन वी हैड कट दिस विद द सॉ चीजल एंड हैमर एंड वी नाउ विल सेपरेट द स्कल कैप see like this this is the skull cap now you are able to see this is the endocranium this is the inner table of the skull this is outer table of the skull this is the diploid the inner table and outer table are made of the compact bone and the intermediate area that is the diploid is made up of the spongy bones here you are able to see the emissary openings of the veins these veins communicate with the sinuses which are formed in the dura mater the emissary veins are the veins which will connect the outer veins that is the superficial veins of the skull to the venous sinuses they pass through this emissary foramen and they enter the sinuses these veins don't have valves they open against the direction of the blood now after rem removing the skull cap you are now able to see this is the dura mater that is the outer covering of the brain that is the outer meninges the dura mater is fibrous tough structure which will enline the skull from the interior now the dura mater gives out four folds which will go inside the brain here this is the fold we have removed the this is the cerebrum in between the two cerebral hemisphere the fold of the dura mater which is going inside this is the falx cerebri the falx cerebri separates the two hemispheres of the cerebrum now when we remove this dura mater from every side the brain gets separated now we will turn the body first we will see the folds of the dura mater inside the skull this is the interior of the skull here is the transverse fold this is the tentorium cerebelli which will separate the cerebrum from the above compartment and just below this transverse cere uh, tentorium cerebelli in the posterior cranial fossa that is the orbital fossa uh, orbital bone here occipital bone here you will find the position of the cerebellum the tentorium cerebelli will form two compartments in the posterior cranial fossa above that is the cerebrum and below that is the cerebellum the cere falx cerebri just now we saw the falx cerebri which will now enter the two cerebellar hemispheres will form a venous plexuses this is the upper boundary which is the superior sagittal sinus and here is the inferior boundary of the falx cerebri forms the inferior sagittal sinus where this falx cerebri meets the tentorium cerebelli here you are seeing the straight sinus so this is the position of the straight sinus the falx cerebri is attached anteriorly to the crista galli the frontal crest of the frontal bone and it is attached to the this is the sagittal suture here it is attached and now on the posterior side here is the straight sinus this is the occipital bone which will show this the transverse sinus so this is the position of the transverse sinus the transverse sinus goes inferiorly and this this is the position of the transverse sinus it goes inferiorly and forms a sigmoid sinus the sigmoid sinus continues below through the jugular foramen to the internal jugular vein here so this is the position of the sigmoid sinus transverse sinus and above was the straight sinus and in this falx cerebri where the superior sagittal sinus and the inferior sagittal sinus so this is the internal occipital protuberance here you will see the confluences of the sinus these sinuses 
carry the venous drainage of the brain. Now we will turn the body and we will see the confluences of the sinus. So now from the posterior side, you are able to see this is the posterior cranial fossa. Now this is the covering, this is the sinus, confluences of the sinuses where the position is the internal occipital protuberance. This position will coincide with this internal occipital protuberance. Now here this organ is the cerebellum. In between the cerebellum and the cerebrum, this is the transverse fold of the dura mater that is the tentorium cerebelli. In this model, we had see, shown the tentorium cerebelli like this. So it is the tentorium cerebelli, this way. So which will go in between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Now just below that cerebellum, you are seeing this foramen magnum. So here is the position of the foramen magnum. So now, this is the foramen magnum and this is the lower part of the brain stem. The lower part of the brain stem will go continuously from this foramen magnum and become as the spinal cord. Here, the con other contents of the foramen magnum are also seen. These are the vertebral arteries. These are the vertebral arteries. These are the rootlets of the 11th and 12th cranial nerves. And here is the internal acoustic meatus. Here you are able to see these are the rootlets of the vestibulocochlear nerve which will enter the internal acoustic meatus. And here see these are the fine rootlets which you are able to see. These are the rootlets of the 9th, 10th cranial nerves. The 11th cranial nerve, that is the accessory nerve, has two roots. So one root will come from the spinal cord, the other root is the spinal, uh, one root will come from this uh, brainstem lower part and the other root is the spinal root which will come from the C1 level. So th these fibers again come upwards through this foramen magnum and they both unite and they pass through the ninth jugular foramen, that is the jugular foramen which will carry 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves. So now this you are able to see these are the vertebral arteries. Then the foramen magnum also sends the anterior and posterior spinal arteries. Then we can see the continuation of the apical ligament of the dens and membrana tectoria. The three meninges of the brain is also continuous through this foramen magnum and forms the spinal meninges on the lower side. So this was the, about the cra posterior cranial fossa. When we remove the skull cap, we are able to see these are the dura mater. Now this was the sinuses confluence. Then the fold of the dura mater which has gone in between the two cerebrum is the falx cerebri. It will look like this and which will, uh, the transverse fold which goes in between the cerebellum and cerebrum is the tentorium cerebelli and in between the two cerebrum, uh, cerebellum hemisphere there is the falx cerebelli. So these were the folds of the dura mater. Now on the anterior side again we can see two cranial nerves. Now, when we remove this dura mater here, this is the first cranial nerve, this is the olfactory bulb and tract. On this side, it, it is prominently seen. This is the first cranial nerve, this is the olfactory bulb and tract. Now, here, this is the optic nerve.
these two are the optic nerves they will cross each other and form the optic chiasma here now on the lateral side of this optic nerve here is the internal carotid artery which will enter the skull through the carotid canal this is the internal carotid artery so this is the orbital plate of the frontal bone on this the orbital part of the frontal lobe of the cerebrum will rest here you are able to see see these two are the olfactory nerves these are the olfactory bulb and tract and these are the olfactory nerves this is the optic nerve and this is the canal and supply the brain thank you this was all about the cranial cavity dissection and in the later we will see the each part of the brain